just back up a little bit again about Mr. Hahn. Oh, well, uh, Mr. Hahn, he was, he thought an awful lot of his people. He thought an awful lot of them, and, they, and in, in most ways he, he was treated them just, well, just almost like, uh, he treated them almost like he would his own folks, you know. Of course, uh, we had, in the town, there's a town of five or six hundred, I forget now, six, five or six hundred inhabitants, but they were all mill people, and, Belong to the, they all worked for the company in various ways. And he, uh, he wouldn't stand for any drinking. Or he wouldn't stand for a lot of things that you hear. You'd expect to hear around a bunch of men and around a big mill as big as that one was. But, Otherwise, he was just a fine fellow. And I know I remember back in 19, and I think it was 19 and 8. Well, anyway, Teddy Roosevelt was president. And we, of course, you fellows are not, I don't guess you know anything about the money panic at that time. But at that time, uh, Wall Street in New York just about run the country. That is where the most of the money is at. And they brought on the money panic. I don't remember now just what, what, uh, all, all about it. But I know that the men that worked for the company, they didn't, they didn't get a payday for two months. Of course, they only paid once a month. But, uh, there's lots of them had to have a little bit of cash, you know. That they, at the wages they got then, they didn't have very much even after it come payday. But they needed their money for other things. Well, it finally Roosevelt just put it up to him. He said, "You can either turn your money, turn the money loose." Or he says, I'll coin it, some of them, for the government, and you can keep yours. Well, they turned it loose. And the word, Han sent word from the office down all over the plank that they was cashing the checks. They'd come and get your checks. And, uh, he said the bank over at one owner is, uh, is catching him. Well, of course, it's just a, a troop of them going over there, you know, but the first one went over, they, they were meeting the others, and they, they told him, says, you know, they're charging us ten cents on the dollar to cash those checks. Cash our checks. Well, my old boy on the hit ceiling. And he is uh, one of the big stockholders in the bank. He jumped, I remember seeing him leaving town. He had a, a top buggy and a big fine span of black horses. And he left in a gallop, going to one on And he sure put a stop to that quick. <laughs> you were saying Everybody that. got their money and and they didn't pay any ten percent either. But he was as a maddest I believe I ever seen him. But he he's a little fellow and he boy and he could get mad. And, <laughs> but you hardly ever seen him mad. Was Fisher Town a, a a good town to live in? Beg pardon. Was Fisher Town a good town to live in? Oh, best I ever lived in. That is the best small town I ever lived in. It was a clean town, and it was just more like a big family. Of course, like I said a while ago, around a big mill, why well, there's bound to be a, a black sheep somewhere, you know. But they were scarce. They didn't usually last very long. 
But in a just what you'd call a big family, now they they kept uh, they kept uh, advertising in all the musical journals for band men. They'd bring band men in and give them a, one of their best jobs, a top job they'd call it, and to just play in the band. We had one fellow there, I remember, come clear from Ottawa, Canada, played saxophone. And uh, there's several out of Illinois, and one fellow from Hawaii, and and the ball team, now the, the uh, sawmill balls, he hired the ball players. And they had to be the best. They had the best team there was anywhere in that whole country. And, and the playing mill hired the band men. Well, and then there's a bunch of the men, a bunch of the fellows over at the mill, over at the sawmill, they decided they wanted a merry-go-round. They formed a company and bought a merry-go-round, a steam one, with a little upright boiler. And they set it down right down close to the store. They run it two and three nights a week. And down at our park, where our band hall was at, why, if, uh, was having two or three day picnic there, which they did usually about once a year, while they'd move it down there. And we had band concerts. They used a band for nearly everything. We'd, some of the brass had come in. Uh, Berkshire was one of the brass of the company, and he lived at uh, Muscatine Highway. And uh, there was two two old maids named Hershey. There was it used to be a Hershey Lumber Company, but I don't remember where it was at down in there. But it was just a small mill. But these two old maids they they inherited uh, their father or the mother, whoever it was, owned the big stock in the mill. And uh, what the they'd come down to on just on a visit, you know. Those two <laughs> girls would get on that log train and go clear to the end of the tramway, which was about uh, 15 miles down on Levin Point. And they'd just get home when they was down there. What did the band play for? You said they went used to get out for everything. Well. We, in the summertime, we had a concert. You noticed the company store in, in that magazine, or I mean that history. Well, it had seats clear around, and they, it was 50 feet wide. Well, we, we gave concerts on Saturday night. We were supply, supposed to play about an hour on Saturday night. And then they had a ten-piece orchestra. Of course, they we just played more for, for uh, well, just because they wanted to have an orchestra. We didn't play for dances or anything like that. And then I always had a small band of my own, just a combo outfit, and. Is music, 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 and sports. You never seen as many guns anywhere, only in an armory. <laughs> About everybody owned guns, dogs, foxhounds of all kinds. They're just a happy-go-lucky bunch of people. Clean, no drunks. Boy, if a man ever got drunk, he just well go to the office and. Say goodbye because he's your part. <laughs> if he took a nose and he won't take on a little bit of a liquor, he went to wine only and he stayed there and lit it all 
died down before he ever come back. I know after this uh, after this deal with the bank over there, Hon got so mad. He called all of us band fellas in. Of course they owned her, most of the instruments. He said, Boys, I we used to go over to Winona usually about once a month in the summertime and and put on a, a concert over there. They didn't have any band. And he says, the first fella that I hear of going over that, or crossing that railroad track with his horn under the arm says, just come up to the office. Your money's waiting for you. 